What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Joyelle Nicole Johnson. She's here, and we discuss growing up with daddy issues. The story is too sad for NPR. Um, That's we right. Talk, we talked about how being, sad it was. being gaslighted by your dad and uh, being in a mixed race relationship. She um, kind of listened to a lot of stuff that I was talking about, and she's got a really good dude now, so I'm happy. For yeah, her. it's a great story, a lot of cool stuff, but also Manschool202. Follow us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Manschool202. That's where we do the bonus shows, the listener mail. We do all the extra content and uh, for a small fee every month, and it helps keep the show going. It helps us keep doing this. Uh, on this Patreon episode, after this episode, it comes out at the same time. We uh, continue with Joelle. We get into uh, how to handle somebody who doesn't want to deal with therapy uh, and what it's like to be happy when your friends are single, what it's like to be in a happy relationship when your friends are single and miserable. So uh, join us over at patreon.com slash manschool202. But enjoy the show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, GYBB? Get your balls back, WWDG, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted, and I am really, really excited. And I usually say that, I've said that 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. We got a special guest in the building. First and foremost, Harry, how you doing? You ready to rock and roll? Absolutely, Dante, born ready. Uh, having a tough time keeping these gators down. But other than that, I'm ready. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to have this person on the show today. Um, she's been on the show before. Um, she's actually sat in as a co-host a couple of times. Um, we've done Karen Hunter together. Like, she's just so dope. And I've always, you know, we'll get into that. But let me, let, Joy Ellis got, got a whole bunch of stuff going F- Fallon and all kinds of stuff. Comedy. What was it? Tell me what it was. What I made a mistake? No. Oh no, no. no. I was you know, just listening. Bunch was of stuff. I mean, credit. she's hustling. <laughs> very, very funny. Lo- dope. Love watching her do her thing. To one of the funniest chicks I know. Give it up for Joyelle, yo. Give it up for Joyelle. Hello, everyone. Hello, gentlemen. Happy, <laughs> happy day. Happy day. Um, <laughs> so happy for you. Um. Joyelle's one of the one of the people who I just thought was really uh I always had like this kinship with Joyelle and I always wanted Joyelle to be happy. Like I wanted her to find a good dude and and um and then I remember we had spoken and she had a, she had, there was a dude who was kind of prospective. Mm. I remember when it was first perspective and then it it, it you know Drafted, came, you drafted him, put yeah, him in the farm she drafted, system. Put him in the, put him in the track, front row. Kept track yeah. of what was going on. Got some mm-hmm. scouting information. What happened, Joyelle? What? Uh, we got together, and Dante is my favorite person to ask male advice from because he's not going to sugarcoat mm-hmm. the the advice. So I told him about the dude, and we are still together. So wow. It, Number one draft pick. We made it through the <laughs> pandemic. That's it. If you make it through the pandemic, it's all gravy now. It's it's mm-hmm. it's so it's sailing. cookies and ice cream now. That's so dope. I'm I'm mm-hmm. so happy for you. Thank um, you. And and I'll tell you why. I mean, I don't want to get into anything you don't want to get into, but Joyo had some issues, daddy issues, um, that she was working through. And, oh yeah, and, and it, yeah, and, that's a double edged sword. As a guy, you're like, yeah, oh yeah, that's right. All the baggage that come with it. It's exciting up front. It's like, you know what, bad daddy issues is like eating at like uh, McDonald's. You're like, oh, this, you get so excited, and then you forget about what happens afterwards. You're like, oh no, yeah, there's gonna be some consequences to this. Grease. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I pissing out my ass? Yeah, this, and I, no matter yeah. how many times you know better, you go, I know this is a bad idea, but I yo, just can't help. Like, it. Yo, they just they they got they got the new the new. Big Mac Sh- with Shamrock Shake, man. <laughs> I mean, and girls with daddy issues, we get a bad rap, but it's like I can't help it that my father wasn't shit. That wasn't my fault, and I'm working on myself. So, kudos to me for working on myself. Well, that's it too. But you know what? The daddy issues, the daddy issues come from daddy issues. Like your daddy had daddy issues. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like we we are affected by by our parents the same way, and then we become less uh less you know reasonable and less less available emotionally for the, for the people that we date you know and then we what happens we end up dating this 
you know, women end up dating the same dude, creating the same scenario over and over and over again. Um, is he's older? Yes. No, he's younger. Really? Got me a little PYT in the building. <laughs> How much uh, younger? Young, yeah, so young that he doesn't get the PYT reference. That's he's how like, young he is. is Joel, could you explain that to me? That's all right, baby. Don't worry about all it. Right, baby. All of my yeah, references. That, that's all. how young he is. She oh got a goodness. Wikipedia, Michael Jackson. It's a whole like, thing. It's like, a whole problem. Mama, what do you mean by mama? Yeah. <laughs> he call you big mama. <laughs> he wasn't there for Thriller. Let's yeah. just say that. <laughs> oh wow, it's fun. Um, but yeah, you 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 find these things, but you know, you, men go through the same thing where they they'll get a, you know, their mother will be a nightmare, and mm. then they'll seek out there. They get a good woman, and then they'll treat her like crap until they find somebody who treats them the way. And it's a funny thing because we, we look at the value, we look at the value in which our parents perceive us. And then we we go, okay, this is what I'm worthy of. This is the love that I'm worthy of. And then when we get more than that, a lot of times we'll cut off the motherfucker that's good to us because we'll be like, yo, I don't, I don't something's wrong with you. Because absolutely, my mama said I wasn't shit. My daddy said I wasn't shit, and you think I'm valuable? Something's so you must not be shit. Yeah, absolutely. How crazy is that? How we crazy? got, we did. I did five years of therapy because I knew I was going to need it to get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. But the second he said I love you, I was like, we need a couple therapists because of the fact of somebody loving me. I was pushing that away. I was like, really? what? You love me? This is crazy. And then the therapist, the couples therapist was the one who was like, oh, this is unstable for you. Right, the fact right. that you are instability. Your stability is unstable for yeah. your St life. Stability is unstable. Yeah. 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 Unsta it was confusing for me. And he was like, oh, yeah, this is just confusing for you. So go with it. So I'm the couples therapist. Stan, get, get you a couples therapist as soon as you can, y'all. <laughs> yeah, or get some consultations with me. I'll help you. I'll hook you up. Don't play. <laughs> Because I'll tell you the truth, you could see it. You could see it. It was weird. I remember talking to you one time, and I was like, and I've always, like, Joyelle's a great businesswoman. Joyelle is funny, and she's creative, and, yeah. and she's kind. Joyelle was always like, I can't wait to watch the baby. I want to, you know, just, just <laughs> a openness. Just of, sweet. Just sweet. Yeah, and, and then just, you know, like, but when it came to, like, dudes, I was like, why? Well, there's a real disconnect there because, listen, there's plenty of women that we all know who are intelligent, who are like smart, great business women. Great. You know, but when it comes to relationships, make bad choices because we Chaos. never equate the same things together. I know plenty of women who are smart and independent and make horrific relationship decisions over and over again. Yes. So many women I went to college with where it's like, you're a lawyer. Same thing with dudes, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. You yeah. married that person. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't argue your way out of that. That's weird. You are a Supreme Court justice. justice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's so confusing because especially for me not having a father. Mm -hmm. I know so many women who have like great fathers mm -hmm. and it really is a crapshoot because they are just as single as I was up until this point because of the fact that having the great father was something that they couldn't compare. It would mean they couldn't compare. Couldn't they, live up to it. They, yeah. 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 It's, it's a really kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a scary balance mm -hmm. um, because you get some, and I've seen that too, where where you have a guy who just loves his daughter, and you this is my princess, and my, and then there's these unrealistic expectations, like baby, I'm not your father. Like I mean, right. I, I love you, I want to take care of you, I want to, but I'm not your daddy, yeah. and everything. And that also, you do your is daddy not, doesn't not have okay. to. Your daddy doesn't have to date you. It's a whole different relationship. Exactly. He, he's not. He <laughs> doesn't have to be with you twenty four seven that way exactly joel did you see yourself could you could were you sabotaging things and were you aware that you was doing this sabotaging or or if there's no. one thing i am is self-aware i've right. always been self-aware to like a painful fault mm -hmm. you know where i'm like oh i'm doing this to myself this is right. and what i realized like my mother for example she was dealing with a guy for like 12 years who never committed to her Mm -hmm. And she told me, don't do that. 
do not give all your time to someone. So I would be in situations where it's like, oh, this is a terrible decision, but I'm only going to give it three to six months. I'm mm-hmm. not going to be right, right, right. for years with this terrible decision. So you did get so, that. You got that blueprint at least. Yes, I got that blueprint and also working on myself in individual therapy. It got me to the conclusion faster that something wasn't mm-hmm. working out. But, you know, sometimes you just be like, I want to cuddle with somebody and have yeah. an orgasm. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's I, and I don't say there's a problem with being with somebody for 12 years if you if that's what you want and you're aware of that's what you want and you're making a conscious decision. But yeah. it's hard to make a conscious decision. I, you know, I've said this a hundred times. You can't let you can't give emotions a seat at the t- table. The minute you allow your emotions to be involved in, and and, and I'm not saying to be closed off emotionally, but I'm saying when you're making a decision, there has to be, you have to look at it almost ice cold business, almost. Like these are the things that I need. These are my non-negotiables and and I am not willing to negotiate these things. And if you don't, if if you're not offering that, that's fine. There's no hard feelings. We could just go our separate way. I mean, it's you can choose to, you know, if you buy a car, you don't have to buy a Benz or be it, it just you can. But you get to have what you get to ask for what you want. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I also realize like the emotions for me are, is my inner child. So mm-hmm. you'd be like, stop letting your inner child drive the car. Right, you know, right, right, it's right. like put put that mug in the back seat in the seat belt yeah. and Consult them occasionally, let them know that you love them, but do not give them carte blanche because that my inner child would be in the relationship with a grown man. And it's like, no, you you gotta, you gotta see that for what it is. Now, was your dad not around at all or was he around somewhat or or was he around later or what? Uh, He was around in a way that was very weird. I knew him my entire life, but he just did not. uh, He told me, he told my sister and brother that I wasn't his child, so wow. Yeah, and I had to like interact with him my whole life. So it wasn't until I was fifteen that they he, found out, and he knew that you were his child. Oh, absolutely, he absolutely knew. And that's got to sting because you got two brothers, and it's not like he abandoned. And he claimed one. them. He claimed them. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. He complained. He claimed my sister and brother, and has other children elsewhere. But I was the only one who knew him. The other kids mm. don't know him. I was the one who had to like have a front seat. To him, you know, to this loving, bullshit. <laughs> yeah, to him loving the shit out of them, <laughs> and me being so like, "What about me?" <laughs> oh man, it's that's um, almost like out of a playbook. How you fuck up your kid? He goes, "Hold my beer. I got a yeah. new way. I got a new way to do this. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm changing the game." And other other shitty dads are like, "God damn." He did it, bro. He's, he yeah, did so it's it. It's like slow water torture. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "You think Joe Jackson got this thing figured out?" Nah. Watch this. Yeah, anyone could just hit their kid with a belt. <laughs> Watch this shit. Yes, I'm gonna get into mine. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I would have rather gotten beat. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the only problem is that when you'd have been beat, and you still would have got the mental shit too. You got the double whammy, and you'd have really, um, it it um. And so when he when he was when he was like 15, is when he he admitted to it, or his wife found out from her sister <laughs> in an argument <laughs> oh so, way. oh yeah that's... nigga. oh yeah how about that la, 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 la. oh god oh, t- oh you god. know two black women going at it and <laughs> she was like i don't know why you think you cute when you bring her oh, around boy. and you don't tell your kids that's their sister <laughs> like like that <laughs> and so that's when everybody was like oh it was like this huge reveal yeah and where did know, this reveal I'm... happen see now i want to know like <laughs> Is this a family barbecue? Because that would make it better. Oh, well, well, my sister ended up graduating from high school very oh. soon after that. So it was like, oh, come to the house. Have a. I've been to their house many times before. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the reveal happened at the house. I mm. think I got some ice cream. Now, <laughs> now have you reconciled Anyone can do a gender him? reveal party. But you to do, do a, it a, uh, a, a 20 uh, years, uh, a daughter reveal <laughs> party. 18 years after the fact, that's pretty good. This, this and child, that, this person you've known is your sister. And then, and this is exactly why Joyelle's funny. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Wasn't funny then. Hilarious. Hila- hilarious. Um, have you reconciled that with him, or is it, or is he just bankrupt of any 
integrity to, to deal with it or do you have a relationship with him now well he's dead oh. um but before he died i actually got to do this npr interview they were they were actually looking this american life wanted to do oh, a really story on me because the story was really interesting so like any doctor. good comedian you did it for the publicity absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah. i won't reconcile. talk to this motherfucker um, we got like so, four million listeners a week you're like uh <laughs> hold on let me get his number i think i still got it also a check but yeah. um yeah we talked for like two hours it was my first time having this one-on-one -on -one conversation with him and in the conversation he denied my existence he completely was like what are you talking about I, you you could call me dad i i acknowledge you as my kid like he completely just oh, the whole story oh, just, Oh, oh yeah, just he denied like, the whole thing. Didn't it just the the hugest gaslight in the world? And the producer was oh. on the other end. She's typing to me in the chat, like, hold, like, hold the line. Make sure keep you going. talk to him. Yeah, Jeez. keep it going. This was via Zoom. This is uh, like a newer. No, uh, this was in person. This was this was when we were doing things in person. This, so this was, was before in, the pandemic. Right before the pandemic, uh, yes. What was and the was, theme they ended up going with? Because I know they go with themes um, here. They ended up going with, we can't use any of this because your father is has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Oh He's my a total God. monster. So I got paid for just you know doing how, the interviews and stuff. Do you know how bad it has to be where it's too sad for NPR to air it? Where <laughs> NPR is like, listen, we can't have this. We got We're a story about so incurable sorry. diseases. We got Joyo, they, all, they, too aired, much. they aired me running, starting the Proud Boys. You got nixed and they took but they took the Proud Boys story. That's they crazy. Absolutely Christ. nixed me. And the producer afterwards was like, can I give you a drink? Because that was really <laughs> stressful. It was stressful for her. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. she needed a therapy session after oh my watching God. me talk to my father. My God, I, and it's funny because Joyelle is such a sweetheart. It's like, like if you were a cunt, I, I would go, yeah, I, yeah, fair enough. You know what I mean? But it's so, it, it's it's so interesting how people, you know, they go through this trauma and then they they point it inward instead of absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was how, all inward think, for me. What do you think? Why do you think that was that you? that you pointed it inward instead of? I don't know. It, and I feel like everyone's temperament's just different. You know, it depends on when you were born. I, I feel like I'm a Virgo. Virgos are very emotional. We're very, you know, like looking internally, which in a sense is like a, a type of narcissism. You, you, and just... your mom, you and your mom's tight though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. I, mean, when we used to... I have her temperament. Yeah. Very, very calm, very, you know, chill. Yeah, I, because it's... <sighs> Wow, like I, I, I think I would burn the house down. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm so much more, like, oh, you hurt me. Well, you're okay. not a Virgo, Dante. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it is. In all fairness. <laughs> yeah, I could have gone the other way with it, but miraculously, I was able to stay kind. It's it's weird too, cause the dynamic of the dynamic of the trauma happens, and then when i always say this and you tell me what you think of this it's like you people have this trauma and the trauma happens at a very young age when you don't have the faculties to deal with the trauma and so whatever little bit of so, so whatever you do know about the social dynamics of people places and things you you find a way to navigate so that you can survive so it's so you either have to emotionally find a way to survive or you kill yourself or you or you die you know what i mean so but you have such a limited uh experience in terms of the social dynamics the problem is that as we get older we don't ever check but like after we've learned things and become more sophisticated and had more more experiences in different relations relationships romantic and otherwise we don't go back to that trauma and say well maybe the solution that i chose when i was 15 is maybe not the best way to mm. deal with i'll give you an example I, I was counseling this girl um and she had been molested at 11 mm -hmm. and uh she so it was so, you know, her understanding of, I mean, she didn't even have an understanding of sex and, and intimacy and stuff like that, but was molested at 11 from her, from her, from her uncle, which she really liked her uncle. So it was mm. like this intimacy. Um, so recognizing how she was, you know, 
hurt by this, the trauma that she dealt with was intimacy. She created this kind of link where intimacy is pain. Right. And, mm. and so, so then she just was fucking everybody because it was a, her way of diluting the intimacy. It was almost like saying, well, sex, sex is just, I'll just never make sex intimate this way. The, you know, the more I do dilute it. So it's like if you have a eyedropper of arsenic and you take two or three drops and put it under your tongue, as opposed to taking two or three drops and putting it in a pool and then you're drinking from the pool, you, you dilute it. So the more sex she would have, and I mean, she was like, the girl was like, uh, she was already like she was a female stripper too which was another thing kind of just putting that out there and she was she was dating this dude she really loved the dude but she was fucking guys girls threesomes just you know just wilding out and the guy paid for the consultation with me and i and instantly from the behavior i was like have you ever been molested and she said yeah she was like from 11 to 17. Mm. and i was like um so I want you to understand that this is this is not a this is not rare behavior. This is this I mean everybody we all think that human as human we all think that we're very different in terms of our responses and it's all the same shit and so you 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 get molested like this you want to to separate the intimacy from sex so you have a multitude of sexual partners as not to deal with then you don't have to deal with the intimacy Mm -hmm. um also had really hard time having orgasms because even that she wasn't mentally there you know and it, there was no intimate connection and and so it was like just letting her recognize that this was something that she was consciously doing and that her 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 choices of being promiscuous and stuff wasn't just hey i love sex it, it was right. it was a, it was a way of her um you know, protecting herself, protecting her heart, protecting her emotion, protecting the intimacy. And then as she got older and she was in this relationship that she really liked this guy, this guy was really nurturing and stuff. She just kept, but the solution that she came up with at 11 years old was the solution that she was using at 28. Right. And she never went back like, okay, this was trauma. Maybe, maybe I should respond to this differently. You know, never reevaluate it. I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm, I'm just saying that that reevaluation has to happen in life yeah. from everything that we've experienced, even the things that we don't necessarily remember, because they say the first five years are our most developmental. So things yeah. that happen that first five years, we take yeah. into our adulthood, and we might not even know what yeah. happened. You yeah. know, there's some kids that have babies that have gotten molested. Um, so yeah, you always have to reevaluate because of like my thing was to bottle up. I bottled up and internalized everything. Right. And through therapy, I learned that I was holding on, losing my voice, not speaking up about things. And the irony of me being in a profession where I use my voice mm, right, right, <laughs> is, right. is just so crazy. Of... It's such a contradiction. Why do you think you would hold, hold things inward, Joyal? Because I thought since my father didn't care about me, why would anyone care what I had to say ah. or or had to share? Because if that person doesn't care, no one cares. You Who know, cared? it's like my if mom no cared. If, and no one cared to tell you anything either. Yeah. If no one else yeah, cared exactly. to tell you the truth. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And then for me with my mom, I was like, hey, he's not acknowledging me as as his kid. Could you stop sending me to his house? And she was just like, no, you still have to go. And I was like, oh, Wait. OK. Okay, so did so you? No I, I forget about this. There's so many pieces to this story. It's incredible that you forget. Like, there's another little avenue. Like, wait, what the fuck about your mom? Your, did your mom know that? I mean, well, your mom would know, right? That you were yes. biological child. Absolutely, and she she didn't know how to handle it. So luckily, we had a therapy session together, which oh yeah. was absolutely magnificent because she apologized to me for that. I didn't even know I needed an apology for that. Right. I never confronted her about that, the resentment that I have. Because when you have a deadbeat dad, you focus all of your hate towards that person, not realizing I had a little bit of resentment for my mother, even though I loved her so much. I was like, oh, I for resent you. For not protecting you, you better. For not for, protecting yeah. me. Yeah. I resent you for not protecting me. And we were able to talk that out, you know? And that, that was 
through a therapy session, she apologized was, to me. And I was like, was oh, the, what do you, I mean, I'm, I'm curious to find out what was her reasoning for forcing this relationship, even though she knew it, you had, you had basically expressed that it was painful for you. It's that whole, you know, he's a black father. I don't want to take you from your father. I mm-hmm. want you to know your father, you know? So it was, you know, when I'm coming home being like, he literally told my, like my brother asked, is she my sister when I was 11 years old? And he look, he did not even look at me and he said, no. And I told her, and then that that's like when my depression and all that stuff started. Right, so at a, wait, wait, at 11, this happens. You tell her that, but you see, I'm a little confused, but, and it's okay because it's a it's a very complex story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're born. He he leaves the house or whatever, right? He or, was never in the house. He was never yeah. in the house. Okay, mm-hmm. so th- you have two other siblings with both parents, correct? The or, no, just his kids with his wife. Oh, just his kids. Oh, okay. All right, that makes yeah. okay. That was where it was. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all right. It, it, and so your mom would send you over there and what would at what age like when you were really a little kid my whole life my whole i knew them my whole life my mother he was a doctor and my mother was his nurse they um he was an OBGYN. his specialty was abortions yay fun and uh they worked together and so when i was at their house i was the friend of the family so they thought i was just his employees, but your, your mom, when she would send you over, would be like, "Hey, you're going over. Where would she say you're going? To your dad's your house." Yeah. Oh, that makes mm-hmm. it even. That's even crazier because one thing. So it's almost like it's not even hidden. That's just the gaslighting the entire time, and that's that'll yeah. fuck you up psychologically. So it's not even like you discover, oh, this person this whole time I didn't know was my dad. You're being told on one side. This is your father. And then he's going, I don't know what I don't know what that bitch is talking about. But uh. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, so in, as a kid, I would I would wow. like create fantasies because I was like, OK, she said my father is a doctor and my last name is Johnson. So maybe Dr. J is my father <laughs> and he doesn't want to acknowledge it because he's a famous basketball player. Like I, I'm, I'm like creating wow. wild fantasies. Because that makes just place. as much sense as the crazy reality yeah, the that's crazy being reality will... <laughs> presented to you right now. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so crazy. And then uh, I think um... maybe Jimmy J.J. Walker. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, who else could possibly From be good my times. dad? Because why would you lie? Why would, like who's lying? I don't yeah. know. They're, you're both grown ups, and that's right. Right. I'm a kid. Busy. I'm a kid. I mean, they where where do you get your truth from yeah. if you don't get it from the adults? Right? Jesus yeah. Christ, kids get fucked up when they find out that their parents are Santa Claus. But imagine, <laughs> but to be told like ah, I'm not your dad. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. And then as a kid, you go, well, I've asked like four times. They keep telling me to shut up. I guess I'll just deal with this when I'm 30. Now, here's, here's I'll the, just be quiet. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, just, exactly. I'll just shut up. I'll just shut up and stop asking. Questions Hence cause... why you don't ask any questions, because every time you would ask questions, people would tell you to shut up. Shut yeah. up. You're wrong. Shut up. You're wrong. Yes, he is. No, he isn't. And then you're like, well, so I guess I'll just stop. This is a lot less complicated if I yeah. don't ask any more questions anymore, if I just stop talking. Now, yeah. here's here's the other crazy thing about that. And I think a lot of times people don't take that into consideration is is that black women have a black women have a thing where they protect black men. It's like the PTSD of racism and slavery, slavery. because mm-hmm. you can't you ain't supposed to be snitching on your man like because, you know, in slavery, you snitch on your man and you 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 get lose killed. Your, you don't get snitch, killed don't you call live, the police, you don't call the police. And so yeah. you get these you get women who are so ready to take the take the, the, the pressure and the weight of abuse in the context of of because of the context of of white supremacy and 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 racism in itself and that and you find that moreover than not like you i mean you 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 have I, i've had seen i've had situations where some dude was beating up some girl and then i stopped to get in like yo and then and then she turns on me like because yeah, that's the, never a winning battle yeah. for anyone involved it's just the, the so on top of that it's just the microaggressions and the the i not even the microaggressions but the historical reference of how how black women protect black men and 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 almost in a way coddle black men which oh yeah makes them not necessarily responsible 
for for their actions and it's somehow if he, you know doesn't hold them accountable for certain things yeah, yeah. and no. harry harry's people i mean did you harry did harry's you have people. that where like you i'm, I'm half armenian half ecuadorian Bloody. it needs explanation it's fine i'm just not white that's all everybody needs to know that's what <laughs> i'd like to announce i know a lot of latino families yeah. where, the, where the boys would not wash a dish oh absolutely like, my my girl my girl she's mexican grew up in that or she had to do everybody's laundry or whatever and her brother didn't and that just wasn't a thing that the brother did the brother you don't do dishes they don't do laundry that's your job as a woman when you're it's a little just girl take out the trash right yeah. that's yeah. it kind of yeah out the take trash. out the trash and yeah, but all the home stuff, cook, cleaning, cooking, that was all, yeah, in Latino yeah. families, that's all the women. The I had women a bit about my last uh, roommate before moving in with my boyfriend was like, he's Cuban and Mexican, and he did not know how to clean. And I was so confused by that, yeah, like, but it was that reason where it's like, yeah. oh, his, Never did sister, it. his sister and mom did it all. And he, yeah. I had to housebreak him. I was not like, dude. Yeah. Not only do you are you do this the 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 girls do it, but if you're caught doing it as a guy, then now you're a bitch, or now you know yeah. you're, it's homophobia. <laughs> now you're gay. You know, like what are you doing? Yeah. Don't do that. That's that's a woman's job. That type of yeah. That that definitely exists in the Latino community for sure. With yeah. that, that machismo, that machismo, uh, and then the the, the my son, my son, my son, I, yeah, yeah. I, I the me my son. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, and my grandmother super duper coddled my father because also take into account he was a doctor. He was a yeah. black doctor. He became a doctor in the fifties. Yeah. Jesus. So yeah. it's like you've already done this magnificent thing, so you can do no wrong. Oh, he's so done. He's like, Yeah, that's just... it, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's like, just have babies I, which, all over which the place. To, which to be uh, to be really honest is a, a is is an accomplishment like a motherfucker, <laughs> but <laughs> Still, you, there's no it, the crazy thing is I I have a I t I have two half sisters and one whole sister. My older sister uh, was um her her um her mother her mother deserted left her um oh. out of and, and which is and we're talking about let me see um forties forties mm -hmm. in forties she left her and. Uh, basically left my father and my father had my father raised her um but what was interesting she went back to school became a nurse and then mary was was messing with this doctor um while my father was watching her what was taking care of her and she was unavailable to my sister um and then got pregnant she got pregnant and then had it. This was before abortion. It was we told before abortion was illegal. When abortion yeah. was illegal, I mean, like it is now. The 70s, um, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like it is Last now week? in Texas, in right? Texas. Right, but, right, right, right. <laughs> but um, and she went and got an illegal abortion and died on a on a on on the operating table of getting an illegal abortion. And so, what's interesting is my sister created this this uh fairy tale about who her mother was who mm -hmm. basically for all intents and purposes just deserted her just mm -hmm. left her and deserted her for a better life and so it was interesting because my mother when my father remarried with my mother um my mother raised her kids raised you know i mean my mother raised her kids when she went back to school and everything else and she never even gave my mom props for raising her kids and as soon as the kids got old enough that she didn't need that they could be latchkey kids my sister took them away from her and you know you know instead of spending time with them and then when they had kids my mother didn't have to have access to the grandchildren oh. so my mom never really and, and harry remembers this was yeah. was my nephew had two kids and i hadn't had my kids yet and so she didn't have any grandchildren and it was like the thing that i like i to this day i believe my mom passed because she did not have access to those grandchildren like it was just um, such a such a heartbreak hard, yeah just such a heartbreaking thing and so yeah and it just was, not just not having that also excuse to to not live, but I mean just to do something with you, you know that energy, and yeah, just kind of yeah, being the alone. Crazy thing that my mother was the only grandmother, even though she wasn't the biological grandmother to her to her kids, not the grandchildren. When 
they when my nephew got married she had created this whole bizarre idea like she used to talk to my nephews about their grandmother her mother as if they never met her like she she had died when my sister was about like nine and she was talk she used to talk about her mother as if they you know grandma she was the as if they never even met this woman the only grandmother that they ever met so it's it's really crazy how you know when you when you when you 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 grow up in america in this kind of racially charged situation how everybody's trying to fu- trying to figure out how to stay sane trying to cope um, yeah all coping mechanisms mm-hmm. yeah, it's just just I, and I couldn't, I was like, she was, and, and they used to have to, they would have like memorials for this grandmother that they never met. And they would be like, mm-hmm. we don't, and they would, and the kids would be like, well, we don't, you know, this, it's my mom, this is what she wants to do. So she just had this whole fiction. Which sister is this, Dante? I mean, yeah, the been... oldest one. Oh, okay. Ky- the one Kyrie I... and Kalik's, uh Right, right. She's the one I know the least, right? She's yeah. the one who's never yeah, really yeah. been around. Okay. Yeah, you have, yeah, yeah. yeah, you have three total. We know yeah. the other two. Okay, but the insanity of that, and just the, and and the fact that she had even created this 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 narrative that her mother was so into her, which like I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you you got deadbeat dads in the fifties and the forties, but when do you have deadbeat mom? We when do you have moms that leave their kid like yo? I'm out. Like that's it's rare. At, you know, culturally, yeah. much rare. Yeah, that, it's rare that's rare in any culture, really. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Which yeah. said, you know, which said what kind of person she was, and you know how selfish and 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 and. Un- but it just also speaks to the importance of women's reproductive rights and how abortion and birth control needs to be, because yeah. women are forced to ha- we're forced to have children. Some women do not want to have kids, and you'll force me to have a kid. I have the kid, I bounce, and now I'm looking crazy when it's like, oh no, I really did want to have an abortion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really insane. Um, you you you, and I think we were all affected by these things, and and then sure. we bring this into and we bring these into a relationship, and you can't even. Uh, but but it's it's weird that you still have to kind of hold people accountable, um, for that behavior. Like uh, like, for instance, it's just you wanting this acceptance from somebody who was incapable of giving you they didn't even like your dad didn't even have the bandwidth for this like my sisters my sister like like my dad my dad and i weren't really close and he was very competitive and he could be like my sisters better than me but i often think to myself my dad was born 1920 like he he grew up in jim crow like at what point in time do i expect him to have the bandwidth to, to, to help me find myself, the self-actualization of my happiness when yeah. when when we're still drinking from separate water fountains. Mm. You know, the Absolutely. insanity of that. At, He's to, many, many steps away from therapy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah especially you know, like, a black man. I remember <laughs> my, my grandpa <laughs> just passed away last year at 91. And when I told him, he met my boyfriend. And when I told him we were in therapy, he got so animated because he was the quietest person. But then he was like, wait, let me get this straight. You pay someone <laughs> oh, yeah. the to concept talk about of your it. relationship? Like he was just like, what are you talking about? Therapy, couple well, therapy. He had no concept of it. Even from 91. Dante's, from as far as Dante's dad goes, you know, what would you tell a therapist in the 19, you know, 20? Yeah. Like, so, I mean, you get beaten on the street every day. You've told me, Cops. how does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, it's dogs and hoses. What are what about how do you feel betrayed by the yeah. dogs and when you yeah. actually have a dog at home like I... yeah you can't get a, a job <laughs> yeah no uh yeah my dad my father was born in 1930 i had an older father so right, right. um he yeah it's like once you get through this and you accomplish something so huge it's like oh i, I don't have to work I can, on any other I can part do of whatever i want to do i, I don't I have to work on any other part of myself so it's like high iq no eq no emotional quotient whatsoever yeah. wow that's crazy was was uh was your boyfriend open to it like what is he was he a healthy dude already like i'm an emotionally healthy dude or yeah well we we're both in individual therapy and uh-huh. It's, you know, it's still that rolling, working on, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. on yourself. So 
both of us have, you know, different attachment styles that we were able to identify, especially once we got into couples therapy about how we're not used to, you know, caring about <laughs> each other. Mm. So it was weird, um, but so happy that he was down to do the couples therapy. Yeah. Now you say when you say attachment styles, and you say so because because you like I said, my impression of we was that you wanted somebody, and you wanted, and you would always kind. How did that like? That's such a contradiction to to when you say that you get that and then you reject it. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. No, because the thought the thought of wanting someone, which I know a lot of people have trouble admitting, like I have a lot of single female friends who don't want to admit that they want a relationship because they feel like that means they're desperate. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be with someone. However, it was so long for me that I was not with someone when I finally got with it. It's like, oh, be careful what you wish for a type of situation where you're right, like, right, oh, right, right. this is everything I wanted. That's <laughs> scary. <laughs> you know, how can I not? So that's the anxious attachment style where it's like, I, you're, the, you're great and I don't trust it. I don't trust the fact that you are a good person. What's, this what's the like trick? Good what's, yeah. yeah, what's the trick? What's a yeah. scam? What's the scam? I'm always yeah. looking for the scammer. I'm loving the scamming documentaries. Um, <laughs> I love watching everything about scammers because I'm always looking for the scam. So uh, I, I knew I wanted a relationship, but then when I got I do it, I realize like, there's not many of those scamming documentaries that involve black people now that I've noticed it. A vast majority of them are white people. <laughs> I was just watching uh, like, the uh, worst, all the them, worst really. roommate. Did you see the worst roommate on Netflix? No. There's this whole what is thing this one? It, people just move in your they move in your house and then they won't leave and then they go. This Squatting? is my house. Oh the, wow! But, but, you know, like the roommate, like the roommate. This dude was like a lawyer. And he knew all of the ins and outs of squad and what his law legal was. He stole this lady's cat. She stole her two cats. And just, just oh it's, yeah, it was, it's, it's insane. But you're right. It's, I don't know if there's not, I don't know if there's Go, not. Generation black. Hustle. Generation Hustle. There's this one black dude who is hilarious on there. He'd be scamming on Instagram. Um, <laughs> you got to watch that. Generation Hustle. All right. Yes. It's 10 episodes. Each episode is a different scam. And that black dude is hilarious. Cause he's like, they have to like blur out half the shit he says because he's confessing to crimes on the camera. And HBO's like, this part we cannot, we cannot say. Cause he was like, oh, this is how you do a scam on Instagram. And he was scamming people on Instagram. It's, Amazing, Harry. God, I gotta it. check this out. I yeah. gotta check this out. <laughs> My girls are into episode. all of those. Yeah, she can't. Oh, it's so it's great. Either to murder or scams. She yeah. loves it. Look for the can't get enough. Generation uh, Hustle on HBO is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just? I, I mean, but it's it's weird when you see those things and you think to yourself, how. Uh, well, you know what's funny? I don't, all even, right, we have, I don't even think in the context of that. Yeah, you, know, you can't like put your mindset. I'd never even approach that mentality of like trying to sucker somebody or hurting somebody to that degree. Yeah. But you have yeah. to have a certain level of delusion. Yeah, Damn that's it. grand worst, narcissism. Worst roommate ever. That's what it's called. Okay, that's the one. All right, you'll, so I got they, two to check out. That one. Worst roommate ever. Insanity. Um, Did you get any more blowback about doing the therapy, Joya, from, from other family? Like... Um... Yeah, I think people people were very much like because we were three months in. However, it is it early for in a relationship for couples therapy. Yeah, very early. And the thing about it is that my therapist told us he's like most people come to me when the house is on fire. He's like the fact that you guys are coming before the fire starts is what makes it more valuable because we're able to grow together. Like he's, he's our throuple. He's our third person in the relationship. He knows right, everything right. about us. And he was the one that made it so that the fire didn't happen. You know, it's like, when but I'm that's a credit to your, something. your aware, uh, being aware mm -hmm. of that. There oh, were yeah. issues. How are you so aware? How did that come about? Like maybe through yeah, therapy, a single therapy. To, to say We're going to do this right up front. And yeah, it's yeah. three months in, I mean, that does that also, he must have really, you must have put it on him, Joel. 
You got, he loved me. <laughs> <laughs> you put the he smoke on him. He was like, whatever I got to do to keep this going, mm-hmm. to keep this train running. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, it was crazy because also we got together March 1st of 2020. So mm-hmm. three months in, we're thick in the middle of the pandemic. And it's like so much chaos is happening in the world. I knew that we were going to need help mm-hmm. for that reason as well, because it's like it's also an interracial relationship. So I'm like, I'm black mm-hmm. and I hate white people. So Jesus, you're saying, hitting all the bingo cards, huh? All, all the cards. It's all, yeah. I'll be like, you know, men, um, oh, they try to take abortion rights away. Men are terrible. My <laughs> people are terrible. He'd be like, hey, babe, I'm, I'm hey, here. <laughs> that's me. I'm uh... <laughs> He's just holding you know? a tray of cookies. So we're not doing this then? I thought we were baking <laughs> cookies together. All right. I'll yeah. just, <laughs> maybe tonight's not the night. Yeah. And let me tell you, Joyo, Joyo goes hard. Joyo, Joyo is uh, Joyo X. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. He's learned so much about black culture from dating me and the black experience, which is fantastic. And I've learned about being mixed race. He's half white, half Asian. So I've learned a lot about a lot about the. So he's got a little, he's got a little, he's got his little trauma. He got, he, he's, Absolutely. He, he's, got, he's got the, 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 the camps, but what, what kind of Asian is he? Taiwanese. Taiwan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They, oh, the Japanese fucked them hard. Oof. Japanese the, and China. I yeah. mean, China, everybody be fucking the with one, Taiwan. It's the only thing that the Japanese and China were able to agree on together <laughs> was fuck Taiwan. Absolute fuck Taiwan. It's so crazy. And they talk about they about to invade. Like they, They've been threatening to invade Taiwan mm. forever. China is so rude. The, um, the, the, his, uh, I'm trying to formulate in my head what I was, what I was thinking. Um, the, um, the the oh I find that the openness of that like I've had a friend I've had a, a male friend of mine that I that I worked with uh when I was at the phone company twenty years and he watched he watched me go through so much like you know we're talking about since like I think we worked together since like ninety four and uh, he watched people jump out of the elevator i get on the elevator and they jump off the elevator he's watched he's seen it happen in real yeah, yeah. real life seen, examples right? we worked for the phone company and where some white lady would tell him i am not letting him talking about me in my house right like we came to fix your phone well whatever you gotta do you can come in but he's not so it was weird because he um he experienced so much of it and then we had a big falling out because it just it, the programming is so extensively that this doesn't exist he really didn't he really didn't have like he just he just saw um the the movie about the tuskegee experiment and so he he's calling me yo i saw the tuskegee experiment and he goes uh I, I you know I can't believe they I can, and he he's telling me the story and I'm like dog, I <laughs> thank you <laughs> I know the story dog I know that he's like and then the 300 of them died but only 150 lived but they didn't think they were gonna and I go dog I yeah I I I but it's it's what's interesting is the programming is so extensive it's so mm-hmm. nonstop I. Um, like Harry and I've been around with each other. A lot of times he'll he'll um he'll but he'll ask me. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and yeah. I think that's all you really want is somebody to to see you hmm. to ask. Uh, can I can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah. What about this? Yeah. And and we don't mind explaining it if you I ask. Don't. But mm-hmm. um because it, there's always imperfect allies. But man um. Just the the inability to 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 be in somebody else's shoes, the empathy, in, the lack yeah, the of empathy, em- lack of empathy, and having that empathy is what makes the relationship <laughs> is what makes the relationship dope. It's just, but you still got to keep re upping that. You know what I mean? Because we, yeah, because we, we're not talking about just here's a relationship. Here yeah, you're a, you're a you're a, a a balanced, emotionally balanced person that I am, which people getting to get but we're different and trying to figure it out there's all these other elements involved as well 
Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. But I also think he had a different perspective because of being mixed race. And we found out in our first couples therapy where our therapist, who's also mixed race, was like, mixed race people, you don't really have a home because both sides of their family are treating them as an other. Right, right. You know, and I don't know if you experienced that, Harry, but um, it's like, so he was able to empathize with me feeling like an other because of the fact that he always felt like an other. However, he is a white presenting male. Yeah. So he get, he gets my experience now where he's like, oh shit, white men are terrible. <laughs> and yeah. he experienced that through me. Like right, right, how right. he gets to see how I get treated and how we get treated together. And he's like, oh, I understand now. And he, he has more empathy. Yeah, how, I, I, I would imagine that that makes, that even makes you closer. The fact mm-hmm. that you, you know, but you could you could also you could also it also could make it so that you could slip some bullshit into the relationship. We could be like, it's because I'm black. <laughs> You're right, but I also be like, hey, buddy, uh, talk to the cop, like that type of shit. But I'm yeah, like, yeah. it's your turn to uh, be the front facing. You know, if we need to talk to a manager. It's me. If we need to talk to a cop, it's him. Uh, uh, that's so. I'm I'm so happy. Um, uh, Joyo, can you hang out for a few minutes? We're gonna do something for the Patreon, and we we'll just. Of course. So, thank you so much. Um, what do you want to plug? What you got going on? What I got going on? Um, I just finished rap writing on the second season of Pause for HBO, Sam J's show. Oh, nice. Dope. Uh, yeah. So that's my first writing credit, and I'm also gonna be on the second season of Flatbush Misdemeanors. I got nice. a little. Oh. Guest star spot, so here I go. And come that's so dope because that. that's that's like our people, you Hell know. Yeah, that is how dope is that? That it's people, you know, small fuckers we watch come up, you know. I mean, I'm so happy and proud of them. I'm so proud of Kevin and Dan and Sam, and yeah. it's just been such a great thing to be a part of. And my Critics Choice nominated special, Love Joy, is on Peacock. Dope, dope, so dope, so dope. Harry, talk to me. Uh, just go to all my stuff uh, at Harry Terjanian. That's where you can find all my stuff, social media wise. Yo, check out our YouTube page, uh, Man School Two Hundred Two. Don't forget the Patreon, uh, patreoncom slash School Two Hundred Two. Um, and uh, don't forget mine. You know, y'all want a consultation? DanteNewell.com. Click on consult. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do? Uh, sexual revolutions being podcasted. We are out, man. We're gonna do this Patreon thing. Sign up for that so you can find out what we dig in deep behind the scenes. Peace.